Hi everyone, welcome to History on Trial. This is Dr. Tracy McCarthy, psychologist, attorney, and educator. We're going to be looking at some unusual observations regarding surnames. Now remember from previous discussions, surnames, when you are in a patrilineal society or culture, those patrilineal surnames indicate your race. And of course, this is in contrast to the way people have been uh, told to envision or understand race, um, but race is really about that family name, about that lineage, about that ancestry. Now, if you are in a matrilineal culture, uh, there will be a different dynamic going on, perhaps. However, we are talking about patrilineal cultures, and we are looking at this idea of the surname indicating the race of the person and some confusion regarding the surname Africa. Now, we have talked about what is is Africa before and where has this name come from and so as you know the entire continent that is now identified as Africa was not always identified as Africa and Africa was uh, discreetly understood as places uh, up in the north uh, portion of Africa now and also a name that comes out of Scotland and so come along so that I can show you some of these oddities that have popped up related to this name Africa. Now, of course, most people would automatically assume that this surname Africa would automatically go along with a particular phenotype, but you are going to see that that is not necessarily the case. If this video appears on anything other than Dr. Tracy McCarthy, it is stolen and unauthorized. Let's get started. As you may recall from our discussion related to what is Africa, that there are uh, various spellings for the name Africa. So there are various transliterations. The standard English spelling is the A. F-R-I-C-A. And then you have a Dutch spelling, which includes the K. Um, you also can see up top that when you look at the distribution of this surname, whether you're spelling it with a C or a K, the main distribution is in South Africa. Now, because you have the K and the C predominantly being in South Africa, it's not possible to readily know the phenotype of these individuals. However, the fact that the surname is a name that comes out of the Isles, and then you also see that there is this uh, prevalence of the surname where people who would have been known as Dutch uh, would be, um, it's kind of hard to know the exact, again, phenotype or racial classification of the people with this surname Africa in Africa. And again, this is where this surname is predominantly found in the world. Okay, so here we have two notations with the K spelling. One you have that is found in the 1920s. This is supposed to be the earliest use of it. It was found in the Philadelphia Tribune. And so there was this respelling of Africa from the C to the K in the 1920s. This was supposed to be based upon a Swahili spelling of Africa. Uh, and then over to the right, you see Africans or Afrikaans. Uh, and this is that Dutch language that's found in South Africa. It's sort of a Creole language, and this is from the 17th century. And looking at ancestry records, you find an estate for an individual named Jacob Africa. And so you see this is in the 1850s and you see there are two individuals with this surname Africa, also indicating Esquire. This person may have been an attorney or may have been of some sort of nobility. And here you have another individual, Theodora Africa, identified as being Filipino. And you also see a cross you see race and you see Filipino for this individual. 
This is when the observations become very interesting. This was done based upon a random search of names for individuals with the surname Africa, looking at US federal census records. And so just a random selection of names rendered a number of people with the surname Africa and all of the individuals identified using this random search for the 1940s. Each person identified was identified with the racial marker of white. And here you see an individual identified as living in Michigan. Uh, you see John and Elsie Africa, and both individuals are identified as white in terms of race. Now for the same 1940 census, this one for Pennsylvania, you see two other individuals with the surname Africa. And this again is a random selection of names. And you see Thomas Africa and Annie Africa. And you look across and you see both individuals are identified racially as white. Here we have another individual in the 1940 U.S. Census, and this is for the District of Columbia. Uh, this individual has an interesting name, which is Primitive Africa, and this person's race is also identified as white. Additionally, using this random selection technique, uh, we see that there is a husband and wife Again, this is 1940 census. This is for Connecticut this time. And these individuals are both identified racially as white. And doing a random selection going back a little ways to 1925, we also see an individual uh, named Bessie Africa, Inza Africa, Marie Africa, and Mabel Africa, and all of these individuals are identified as white. We have long discussed the need for a truth commission to get a better understanding of the ancestral narratives of the people in America and also in other parts of the world. Uh, these ancestral narratives are fairly interrelated. They are very integrated. Uh, it's very difficult to disentangle them, but the ancestral narratives are very confusing right now. And this random selection demonstrates this. There are all sorts of assumptions about what it means to be African, who is African, and uh, what that means in terms of both history, present, and the future. This also ties into dynamics related to the census, where people are categorized based upon uh, these assumptions related to uh, being from Europe or being from Africa or being from somewhere else and a belief that that is tied to the standard understandings of a race based upon Negroid, Caucasoid, and Mongoloid. And so it is very important to keep in mind that surnames do indicate race in terms of lineage, but what we have here is a great deal of confusion about what that means. And so with respect to the census, one thing that you might want to keep in mind, instead of simply pigeonholing yourself into these little markers that they have on the census, there is another marker that's uh, down a bit on the census where it has racial categories and individuals might consider actually putting in those family surnames to um, help identify who they are and also in the future to help descendants identify who their ancestors were because you have countries that change names you have all sorts of uh, societies that change different markers and different identifiers but those surnames tend to stay pretty stable with some transliterations, but they tend to stay pretty stable over time from father to son, to father, to son, to father, to son, 
regardless of what that surname might be. And so that actually might be a better marker um, in terms of understanding race than any other markers. Of course, the problem with this is that people have created all of these fictitious dividing lines in terms of race and what people would find if they started doing the racial markers according to surnames, they would find that many people that they think are their quote unquote enemies are actually their cousins. And some people that they think are their cousins simply because they look like them are not in fact their cousins or even uh, close clan members. Remember, knowledge is power. Take care. See you soon.